Hello, digital charcuterie fans. Welcome to Casual Friday, because it's Friday and we're casual. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to click the like and click the bell and click the subscribe and click lots of things, because that always helps us. And literally all you have to do is do that with your, unless you're left-handed, and then in which case you're doing this. Or maybe you're ambidextrous and you have two mice and you're just going wild on that screen. I wonder what would happen if there's, would the screen put two cursors? I don't know, somebody figure that out. Anyway, thanks for tuning into Digital Charcuterie. Uh, do all that stuff that I just mentioned. And also, if you wanna help a brother out, um, you can go to Amazon right now and pick up my fantasy novel, We Were Wizards. This is book one, it's called Seekers of the Stones. You can get it right now on Amazon. This is the hardcover. You can get ebook and paperback as well. And I even have the next book in the series, which is not book two, long story, but it's the second one you're supposed to read, Ghosts of Wizards Past. That's also available right now on Amazon all over the world. So if you're a fantasy fan and you like swords and wizards and epic battles and dragons and people who are purple, because that's a thing, purple is a big deal. That's why this book looks like this. Check these out. I promise these are really fun, really cool. You are going to have a blast because I had a blast writing them. This is going to be a pretty quick, uh, quicker than usual casual Friday because yesterday, the 8th of June was my birthday. As you can see, there's like present stuff behind me because I share a birthday with my cousins, so there's this whole thing happening. And tonight is the birthday dinner because I was working all day yesterday during the actual birthday. So today is the day of la celebration. So it's going to be a quick one, uh, but I wanted to come and talk to all of you and answer some uh, a fan email as well. So first and foremost, before we get to the fan email, I want to talk about something I got for my birthday and, and kind of tie it into a topic I wanted to go over. I got this sexy book that's been out for a couple months now after many delays. Star Wars Timelines. Uh, my mom got me this for my birthday. Thanks, Ma. And uh, Star Wars Timelines is the first DK, nice, juicy Star Wars reference book that has come out in almost five years. It's nuts. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary was the last one, and I have been waiting patiently, maybe not so patiently, ever since. And I was just thinking of the nature of these books, because these are arguably next to the movies, my favorite part of being a Star Wars fan is getting books like these and flipping through them. Um, I don't wanna really spoil stuff, but I'll just kind of show you a couple pages and maybe read an excerpt or two. But I love getting these kinds of books. And the only downside to these kinds of books is because Star Wars is always expanding, they never feel complete. I mean, back in 2006, when you bought a book and you thought it was over, it really felt complete, but now, not so much. Here's a little piece of Star Wars Timelines trivia for you. Do you want to know what happened uh, 232 years before the Battle of Yavin? Well, a transport ship called the Vessel departed from the Starlight Beacon, rather, departed for the Starlight Beacon with four Jedi passengers. There you go. I bet you didn't know that, did you, internet? But the reason I wanted to bring up these DK books, because they are my heart and soul, and I've got a whole shelf full of them right over there is the ever-changing nature of Star Wars and the ever-growing nature of Star Wars. Now, I only just got this yesterday, so I am literally only like 20 pages in. And I know that sounds like a lot, but the pages don't really have a lot of text on them. Like if you see that, I'm a fast reader anyway, so that reading these two pages takes me like two minutes tops. It is very easy to get through. Um, so I haven't gotten through a lot of the book, and I don't want to jump ahead and spoil myself, but I wanted to talk about this because we know we have the Acolyte coming, for example. And the first chapter, that I, the chapter I'm currently on, is about the High Republic because, you know, it's going in chronological order. And the Acolyte takes place in the High Republic. So obviously, as soon as that show comes out, this is going to feel incomplete. Ahsoka comes out in about two and a half months. As soon as Ahsoka comes out, this book is going to feel incomplete, which is a shame because it's a gorgeous, beautiful book. So I can't help but wonder, yes, obviously Disney loves that because they get to double dip and come out with a second book. Uh, and the worst is when they come out with a second book that's exactly the same and they just add like 14 pages to it and they make you buy it all over again. That's, uh, I hate that. So with the, the fact in mind that we're getting all these new shows and hopefully new movies in the near future, I can't help but think of 
something that a friend of mine used to get. I didn't get it myself, but he used to get this back in the 90s. And if anybody watching ever had this thing, I want you to chime in and tell us about your experience with it. Because I thought that this, when he showed me this, my friend pulled this out of his room. He's like, look what I have. And I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. It was about dinosaurs. This was 30 years ago, right? Jurassic Park was brand new. So everybody wanted to know about dinosaurs. And it was a thing he got in the mail every month. Uh, and in the first package that you get, you get this beautiful, big, glossy dinosaur book. But it's not a glued and printed and bound book. It's a binder. And you get a bunch of pages about facts about dinosaurs. And it was so nice looking and colorful. And there were like comic book areas and areas where you could color and areas where you just learn stuff and just games and all kinds of stuff. Right, because it's targeted towards kids. But every month, you get new facts and new information. And all you do is you pop open that binder and you add that stuff and you close it up, boom. And it's all still there in one book. And I'm curious because Star Wars just keeps on growing and changing. I wonder if that'll ever be a thing that happens. Probably not because Disney and DK like money, unfortunately, but wouldn't that be neat? Wouldn't that just be something else if this book, as beautiful as it is, and I love that it's a hardcover bound book, but imagine if it was just this nice, solid binder. And they tell us, you know, okay, this is page, uh, oh, I don't want to jump too far ahead. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but here we go. This is page, you know, 32, whatever. Um, and they'll say, hey, look, we got these new pages coming out in October. And due to what those pages are about, they are going to be labeled 32A, 32B, 32C. And what you have to do is flip to page 32 in your binder, pop them open, put those new pages there, close it, and now it all still flows seamlessly and chronologically, right? I think that would work. I think that when the Acolyte show comes out, they can just make those pages, uh, which probably is much cheaper to make than a full book anyway, sell those for like, I don't know, depending how many pages there are, like five bucks. And then if you want them, you slip them into your book. Boom, I think at the end of the day, that could make them more money. The thing is not too many people buy these books, but I don't know. That's just something that I myself would kind of dig seeing. And that way your book would never have this sense of incompleteness or irrelevance to it. It would just have this sense of growth to it. And hey, if it ever gets to the point where they have a lot of pages and the things are becoming stuffed, you just make a second binder and you start spreading the love between the two. Uh, because when I think of that dinosaur thing, which I really wished I had gotten into, uh, I was pretty jealous of my friend when he showed me that thing. And just all the cool stuff that would come with it too. Like every month you would get a little plastic dinosaur bone. And after, you know, 30 issues of this, 30 months, you would be able to build a T-Rex skeleton that was like, I don't know, this big out of these plastic bones. So they put a lot of thought and effort into that little thing. And that was a little cheap educational thing just for kids who want to know about lizards that don't exist anymore. Imagine what you can do with that with Disney's budget. And a lot of you have seen the Rebel Scum podcast video that we did on our sister channel, Rebel Scum Podcast Network, about Star Wars missions, which was a mail order monthly Star Wars game that I subscribed to. And if you haven't seen that, you can check out uh, the Scholastic Star Wars missions video. We made a couple of them where I just talked about how cool that thing was. Uh, I'm just imagining something like that, but with a bit more heft to it and a bit more quality behind it as a, not even monthly thing, but just coming out as new movies and films and movies and films are the same thing. Movies and comics and shows and whatnot come out. We just get more information on that. So that's something that I think would be maybe kind of interesting. I don't know. Tell us what you think about that. And speaking of you find people telling us things, uh, we have an email from a fan that is a long time coming. This is from Donovan Mitchell. Donovan, I'm sorry we haven't gotten around to answering your question yet, but hey, today's the day, my friend. Donovan asks, do you think the next Avatar will make $1 billion also, or are people tired of it? That's a good question. I didn't think 
the way of water was going to be as successful as it ended up being. I figured it would make pretty good money. Like I didn't think it was going to tank or anything like that, but I figured after 13 years, the hype was over and people would, you know, I, I thought way of water would just make the kind of money that a average Marvel movie makes, right? We're not talking like black Panther or Avengers. Avengers. We're not talking, let's try this again. Clearly I'm not talking. We're not talking black Panther or Avengers levels of money. I just thought it would make the same amount of money as like a, Thor Ragnarok or something, right? Just like, hey, this, this did well. I didn't foresee that it would climb into the top three of all time, but it doesn't shock me that it did. It's clearly a great movie with great love behind it. It's movies that, you know, we don't get too many movies like Avatar The Way of Water, even though we get a lot of blockbusters. So Donovan, I think with Avatar 3, See, we have like the opposite effect now. We have the effect of now the hype is back and it's still justified, but we might run the risk, like you said, of people being tired of it. So because those two scales are just reversed, nothing else has been added or subtracted, I think it's still a safe bet to say that Avatar 3 will make a billion because nothing horrible has happened. Nothing bad has tainted the name of Avatar yet. Such would Literally, the only thing that could possibly go wrong here is, like you're saying, maybe people are just tired of it. Maybe people watched this and said, that's it? That's all we got after a 13-year wait? I don't know who those people are, but clearly I wasn't one of them. Uh, so maybe that's it. Maybe all those folks are just like, oh, I didn't care for the sequel at all. And then they just shunned part three onward. But I believe we're going to get a very high-grossing movie yet again. Um, it's going to be kind of strange when all this is said and done because the top eight movies of all time are probably all going to be avatars at that point, but quality is quality, I guess. Uh, and I mean, The Way of Water was my favorite movie of 2022, so they did something right in these poorly constructed eyes. Uh, but I'm going to see Avatar 3, no question, and the hype around just the streaming release of Avatar 2, which is happening concurrently, is you know, there's hype behind that. There's buildup behind that. People are talking about it. So I don't think Avatar is going to die down anytime soon. If part three ends up sucking for some awful reason, which I hope doesn't happen, then we might be having a different conversation at that point. But I still think it making a billion, or even if it's literally just south of a billion, is still pretty much a guarantee. So thank you so much for your question, Donna. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much, everybody, who's been watching us here on Digital Charcuterie, who's been tuning in for Casual Friday. Again, I'm sorry this was a shorter episode, but there's lots to do today, big birthday stuff going on. But I wanted to make sure I took a little bit of time to get casual with all of you fine people. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, may you be the masters of your own destiny. I mean universe. I always mix those two things up. But be the masters of your own destiny too. Why not?